Subaru has now given us a rugged alternative to a Jeep Grand Cherokee or a Hyundai Santa Fe, the XRT, which would be a rugged styling on the exterior, and even a Toyota 4Runner. Today, Subaru of North Tampa has given us the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition in your crystal white pearl, the more rugged, all road oriented crossover in the sixth generation. And what is this going to entail? A lifted ride height to compare to those rivals. But the main difference is this is going to drive like a car instead of an SUV or something so rugged that it's hard to drive it on a daily basis. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. We're gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. Subaru Outback Wilderness is based off the XT trim. It's going to gain that more rugged profile, increasing the ride height from its normal 8.7 inches to nearly 10 inches. This is close to Jeep Wrangler territory, standard steering response LED headlamps in the hexagonal pattern. LED fog lamps are now standard in the base. Two front bumper tow hooks with the orange to outline it. And I like the rugged styling and performance. It flares out at 73 inches. It's not the tallest, but 66.1 inches crossover SUV. The hood will get the decals. It's a more flat, so you have a little bit of aerodynamics, but really we're going for rugged styling. And they start that off with the fenders with the matte black covering it. And again, bulging them out encasing these 17 inch six spoke black wheels the disc behind it at 12.4 inches it's ventilated 11.8 inches in the rear ventilated as well with four wheel independent raised suspension a strut front with lower arm suspension a double wishbone rear suspension both the front and the rear will have your stabilizer bar the badging now on the side for the subaru wilderness and then you get the outback that's going to be in the orange on the lower skirt just that rugged performance styling cues that they're giving you raised roof rails and with this one you got the orange for the tie downs 700 pounds can be fit on top of this i mean it's almost like you're towing something when you put it up there that's how much weight you have and you cannot get this when you compare it to the rivals this will be the best in class subaru x mode paired with symmetrical all-wheel drive vehicle dynamic control and active torque vectoring the length of the vehicle at 191.3 inches a wheelbase at 108.1 inches this one will be the largest of all three of the vehicles but when you look at what you're getting here a vehicle that's daily driven adventure I mean, 700 pounds. Working our way to the back with a lower roof spoiler, no gloss black. It's all the matte black except for around the wraparound tail lamps. And I like that we're doing the matte black again because the rugged styling and it's chip proof. Whenever you're putting your animals in here, you're taking anything out, you're not gonna have to worry about anything. And the best part, dual exhaust outlets with two tow hooks in the back, reverse parking camera, it's 180 degree, and reverse sensors. Towing up to 3,500 pounds for the turbo, which is what we have. If you do the non-turbo, it's only 2,700 pounds, just to throw that out there. So it's almost on point with pretty much the competition, but I do like the wilderness badging going inside to your power tailgate with cargo starting at 32.5 cubic feet. Fair tire with a 12 volt, the rear bench split folds at a 60-40 split that's going to max the cargo to 75.7 cubic feet. This is going to be more than that Hyundai Santa Fe. For an everyday adventure, the Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition really does tick all the boxes. And when you're looking at price point, you're going to save at least $1,000 to nearly $3,000 comparing it to Jeep and Toyota. And Subaru backs the performance with a 2.4 liter turbocharged flat four boxer engine producing 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a CVT transmission that mimics an eight speed automatic transmission, achieving 22 to 26 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 at 6.1 seconds. That's gonna be faster than the Jeep and the Toyota 
quarter mile at 14.7 seconds, and yet again, faster than them as well. So when you're looking at getting to your adventure quicker, doing some more off-roading maneuvers, you could do that with this four-wheel independent suspension. I mean, can't wait really to see what the interior looks like. Let me know what you think about the exterior of the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition with 40.1 inches of headroom, 42.8 inches of legroom. It's going to be a mixture of more than the Jeep and the Toyota plus the Hyundai. So when you're looking at interior space for the passenger and driver in the front, this is something to definitely look at. StarTech water repellent seats, 10-way power adjustment for the driver, 8-way power adjustment for the passenger with the Subaru Wilderness badging, that orange contrast stitching, and the feel to it is really nice as well. A simple dashboard layout with storage for the passenger. The orange is going to circle the lower part of the dash, and the top part is going to be more of a matte finish. Upgraded Starlink 11.6 multimedia touchscreen with navigation. So we have the pinch and we have the swipe. It is a little glitchy at times. This does have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, Bluetooth connectivity, the dual climate control. You do it through here as well. And again, it works, just a little glitchy. 180 degree reverse camera with full trajectory. Pretty easy for reversing, I just wish it was the full screen. A total of eight cup and bottle holders, which is something I always talk about. It's gonna start off here, 16.9 ounce water bottle fits, you could probably fit a 32 ounce. In this center here, you got the gloss for the first time with the orange around your gear lever, a little storage area for a smaller cell phone, two USB ports, elbows are pretty soft, which is a nice little touch, giving a little bit of luxury. This is a two tier, so open up for the first, and you can really just fit like a notepad. Open up again, it's a little bit more deep with the 12 volt charger. Your Subaru EyeSight is up a little bit better in this particular model, so it's easier to adjust your rear view mirror. Steering wheel is a three spoke multi-function with the paddle shifters. Gauge cluster does have a information screen that can go through some information. Door panel is pretty soft for the most part. I like the pattern structure. You could tell this is the wilderness on every single angle for the front. One touch up and down for all the windows and storage in the door panel. Like I said before, total of eight cup and bottle holders. So it's pretty efficient for a family, for an adventure, going off-roading, you have a sunroof. Let's see how I look in the back. In the back seats, I'm at 39.1 inches of headroom, which is more than the Hyundai, 39.5 inches of legroom, more than Jeep and Toyota, heated rear seats, dual USB ports, dual air vents, and storage behind both of the front seats. Now the floor is not completely flat. Elbows keeping that same softness. Cup holders, you can fit maybe a 20 ounce back here. So it is pretty efficient as well. Door panel, you're gonna have the softer materials. It's pretty much a mimic of the front. It just takes the wilderness badging. It gets that orange contrast stitching. And like I was saying for storage, I mean, you have enough cup and bottle holders in this model. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center, headroom, no issues. Leg room, the same thing. I mean, I'm blocking the vents. Obviously the heated seats and your USB ports, I'm sharing butt space, shoulder space, feet space, and this is derived because it's not the widest SUV. It's going to be okay to fit three adults my size and dimensions for maybe a 30, 40 minute drive. It won't be too bad. But because it's a 60, 40 split, you can also fold these back. And for the person here, it's not gonna be necessarily too bad either because even though you're sitting up higher, you can recline a little bit and enjoy a ride. Taking the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition out for our test run, 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer flat four cylinder. This is really what you wanna do. And you get the XT trim when you get to this level. You're gonna have the power and performance that you need. You have everything, I mean, look. You can literally move in and out really easily as well. So I do like the fact that you have these capabilities with the vehicle. Visibility, you're sitting higher up. So with this wilderness, I mean, an inch extra of ground clearance. It's already at 8.7 inches, so you can do the math. It's nearly 10 inches off the ground, and you sit pretty nice as well. Independent suspension, it's definitely a nice attribute. 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque. We're gonna get it a little straight so you can really see what this boxer does. Now, even though you sit up higher, 
the wind noise isn't so significant and it's a windy day today. The engine note, you really don't hear it until near a two and a half to three RPM. So it's a pretty quiet ride. No dual pane windows. It stays on the road really smooth. I mean, when you start going into the Jeep, you're gonna feel a little bit more of a ruggedness. This one, it really does drive like a car, like I was saying on the exterior. As for dynamics, it's gonna be boaty, but you expect that for the length of this vehicle. It is the longest compared to the rivals. But I mean, you can drive this all day long and you're not gonna get tired. With the turbocharged engine, you can easily just push the throttle and you're ready to go. Subaru EyeSight, you can see it literally just works like that. And the vehicle wasn't even close to me. So that shows you the safety capacity that you have inside the Subaru. The visibility in the front is great because you are lifted up higher. Looking into the rear, the back window is huge. So you really don't have to turn your head too much. You got the blind spot monitoring as well. You're pretty much, again, in good hands when you come to the Subaru. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things that I like about the vehicle is you sit up higher, but it's not over the top in the sense of you need running boards or you feel too high. It's actually a really good blend when you get to the wilderness trim. Even the 8.7 inches of ground clearance normally that you get is still good. It's just I kind of like this one a little bit more because you have more attributes and it looks a little bit more stylish as well. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is the simplicity of it. Now there's a disadvantage which we'll get to, but it is super easy for anybody to configure and use the car, very user friendly. And when you get into these price points, comparing it to the rivals, this one's just like really ABC. Sometimes you'll have to click into other things when you get into the Jeep because the infotainment screen is easy as well. It's just they have a lot more going on. The last thing that I like is the fact that you can fit a lot. You have a sufficient amount of cup holders, bottle holders, cargo space, towing. I mean, the roof rails can hold 700 pounds. That is crazy. The three things that I dislike about the vehicle with that simplicity, the disadvantage to it is it's so simple that I can see if you're a car enthusiast, you might lose some interest. That's only because there's not really a lot to play with. But the turbocharged engine will offset that because you can just hit the gas and you go back. The second thing that I dislike is the 11.6 touchscreen infotainment. It's great that it's nice and wide and I like the vertical setup. I just hate that every single thing is there except for the fact that you do have your air vents here on the side that you could lower or raise the temperature and you do have a couple of knobs but for the most part everything is derived through that infotainment screen and i don't like that because if that goes bad then i mean how are you going to work your systems the last thing that i dislike about the vehicle is the towing because this is the wilderness edition i understand they don't have a lot of differences in the powertrain and they offer symmetrical all-wheel drive in all of them except for the brz that's a rear-wheel drive vehicle and I appreciate that. I just wish that they would give you a little bit more towing because when you're comparing it to a Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's going to out-tow this. When you're comparing it to a Toyota 4Runner, it's gonna out-tow it. But for the speed, the car-like drive, the feel to it, maneuverability is good. I mean, there's a lot of pluses in this vehicle, the longevity, I mean, 93% of Subarus that are over 10 years old are still on the road today. And one of the nice things is the fact that you drive this on a long journey and you're not going to be tired because the seats are comfortable. 10-way power adjustment for the driver and eight-way for the passenger. This is better than luxury vehicles that would be at least 10 to $20,000 more and you're getting this in a Subaru. So you do get some luxury attributes. You have the easy cleanup because these are water repellent seats. You have enough charging ports and my best part is the cup holders plus the zero to 60. So when you're getting up onto the highway and that's really why I stress the importance of these numbers, you can actually pass a semi truck. Whereas on some SUVs nowadays, it takes 10 seconds nearly to get to that speed. When you consider that, you're gonna have to slow down, otherwise you're gonna hit that semi-truck. So comparing it to the Toyota 4Runner, I actually like the drive better in this because it's very rugged on the 4Runner. So for a long drive or even day in it and day out of use, 
it's going to get a little bit more wear. Obviously, you know what you're buying if you get like a TRD spec or whatnot. It's just, it's gonna be more ruggedness, whereas this one's gonna be more car-like, so for longevity purposes, it's easier to drive this one. Comparing it to the Hyundai Santa Fe, really there's not a huge difference when you get to the XRT trim. The drive is gonna be still pretty soft, but it's gonna be a lot more noisy. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is a great alternative as well. However, the gas consumption, you have to really grade all these things. And this is what I mean by a great package all in one. I like to thank Subaru North Tampa for giving us this 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.